Hi guys, I'm Kasia. Welcome to the channel and welcome as always to our Coffee Times to discuss movies and horror and today we're going to take a look into Ellie Roth's filmography. It's Coffee Time! So the idea for this video came because I know Thanksgiving just came out almost globally on the 17th of November and I was hoping it was also going to come out here so I could go and watch it but it turns out it's not coming out in the Netherlands until the 1st of December which I am aware that we do not celebrate Thanksgiving over here but other countries like the UK who also don't celebrate Thanksgiving did get the movie on the 17th of November so I'm a little bit unsure on why, I don't know if it's because they need to get ready the subtitles since the movies here do get subtitles um, even though they are played in the original language but the subtitles are in Dutch so I don't know if that's because of that but I was a little bit bummed to know that I was not going to be able to watch it on time so I decided let's take a look at all the other movies that Ellie Roth has done that he directed and there are horror so let's dive into it Ellie Raphael Roth is an American screenwriter, producer, director, actor. He's done everything. And he's most well known for his horror movies that are considered splatter horror. Or in some cases, you would go to the extreme, which is torture porn. Many journalists have included him in the group that they like to call the Splat Pack, which is movies that are very violent and very gory. This also includes horror movies that are considered controversial, which is also the case of some of his films. He studied at NYU Film School and one of his projects, one of his movie projects there was a movie called Restaurant Dog, which it is, you know, in reference to Reservoir Dogs by Tarantino. And thanks to an internship, he was introduced to David Lynch and they have remained friends over the years. Now in this video, I'm not going to address his projects as a um, screenwriter, as a producer or an actor. I'm going to just take his projects as a director. I'm also not going to address the projects that he has done for television. This is going to be mostly based on his horror movies. Cabin Fever. Bert, a college student vacationing with friends in the mountains, mistakenly shoots a local man with a skin infection while hunting in the woods. Panicking, he abandons the scene and leaves the man for dead. When the man stumbles into a reservoir, he infects the water supply, and soon one of Bert's friends becomes infected. The friends struggle to stop the contagious, flesh-eating disease while on the run from a group of locals out for revenge. Roth co-wrote Cabin Fever with his college roommate, and they based the premise on Roth's experience of contracting a skin infection while riding ponies at a family friend's farm in Iceland in 1991. Cabin Fever manages to deliver humor as well as gore and keep the viewer invested even when at times you want to cover your eyes. Hostel. In the film, three friends are lured to visit a hostel where they think their sexual fantasies will come true. Instead, they fall into the clutches of an international syndicate that provides first-hand torture and killing experiences for rich, sadistic tourists. Roth reportedly turned down studio directing jobs to make Hostel. He took a directing salary of only $10,000 to keep the budget as low as possible, so there would be no limit set on its violence. Whether you like it or not, this grim and gory survival horror is an entertaining yet intense watch. Thanksgiving. Roth directed and narrated the full trailer segment Thanksgiving for Grindhouse and appeared in Death Proof, Tarantino's segment of the film. In January 2023, it was announced that Roth was developing a feature-length film version of Thanksgiving. Hostel Part 2 A copy of Hostel 2 leaked out before its release and had millions and millions of downloads affecting the movie's performance in the box office. Three young American women traveling abroad in Rome decide to take a weekend excursion. Lured from the intended destination by a beautiful acquaintance, the women anticipate a stay at a luxurious spa. Instead, they become pawns in a grisly game designed to entertain wealthy people from around the world. This slow burn sequel is not as thrilling as its predecessor, but does still bring the audience the gore they are looking for. The Green Inferno 
Justine, a New York college student, befriends an activist and together they decide they want to try and save the Amazon. But they will soon regret the decision when their plane crashes in the Peruvian jungle and she and the rest of their group are taken captive by a tribe of hungry cannibals. Roth was inspired by his love of Mondo horror films, such as the infamous Cannibal Holocaust, but the film was criticized for its portrayal of indigenous people as cannibals. This is a movie that is meant to be gory, not scary, and even though the plot is predictable, it still was entertaining in a modern satire that brought back cannibalism to the fullest. Then he proceeded to do two thrillers, one of them being Knock Knock, so I'm not gonna talk too much about this, um, but I can tell you that I absolutely hated this movie and I think it was kind of the purpose of the film not to make you hate it but to make you just so annoyed by it like I was just so annoyed by the characters I was just so desperate for the movie to end and I think that was a purpose so in a way the director managed to do or to get the emotion out of me that was intended so for that you know I'll give him some points. This crime thriller is about a devoted husband and father that helps two stranded young women who knock on his door but his kind gesture turns into a dangerous seduction and a deadly game of cat and mouse. Then he did the action thriller Death Wish, uh, and this is a direct like remake of a movie of the same name from 1974. And now we're back to the present, and we are about to talk about his latest movie, and that is a slasher film called Thanksgiving. It is based on Roth's fictitious trailer by the same name from Grindhouse, and it is the third trailer from Grindhouse that is being adapted into a full-length movie after Mashiri and Hobo with a Shotgun. An axe-wielding maniac terrorizes residents after a Black Friday riot ends in tragedy. Picking off victims one by one, the seemingly random revenge killings soon become part of a larger sinister plan. I'm really excited to check this one out, to be honest. I love festive horror movies, but unfortunately I'm gonna have to wait a little bit longer to watch in the theater. As for his next projects, his name has been tied to Borderlands and he's supposed to direct this one. It's supposed to be a sci-fi action comedy and it's obviously based on the video game series. And those video games are some of my favorites. I love Borderlands. I have played the games so many hours, <laughs> um, especially one and two. I played those like all the expansion packs. Like I have played the hell out of it. And I still, it's one of my favorites, honestly. I have so much fun with those games. So I'm also really excited for that one whenever it comes out. Um, I know video game movies don't always turn out to be great, <laughs> but I do have hopes. Um, also because his name is tied to it. I don't know how the violence is gonna go in the game, uh, in the game adaptation, but I'm hoping it's going to be brutal, um, like the deaths in the game. So this was, you guys, my video on Eddie Roth, and I wanted to focus on his works as a director, also specifically horror movies. So I hope that you enjoyed the video, and uh, hopefully you guys already have had the chance to watch Thanksgiving, and if you're suffering like me, I feel you. Let me know down below if you like him as a director, if you like his movies at all, and if so, which one is your favorite? Do you think that he is leaning too much into controversy and torture porn in his movies? What is your take on him? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video nonetheless, and I hope to see you all, as always, in our next coffee time. Bye!